In this video I'm going to show you how much the Model S depreciates per year and per thousand miles driven and what a fair purchasing price is. Also, we will use these numbers then to figure out what depreciation you can expect on the brand new Porsche Taycan. So let's get started. Now then, the Tesla Model S is the first electrical car to feature on this channel. Whoa. And when it comes to the depreciation rate of electrical cars like the Model S, the opinions are divided. It seems namely that you can find evidence which supports that electrical cars will actually depreciate less than normal cars, but also evidence which would support that electrical cars are depreciating a lot more than normal cars. However, when it comes to the Model S, most of the studies indicate that these cars are depreciating a little bit less than normal cars or at the same rate. And truth be told, the Model S is an also the benchmark in its class. That might however change now that the Porsche Taycan arrived. But to be fair, it doesn't seem that the Taycan will blow the Porsche out of the water in terms of technical specifications. And maybe they are also realizing this at Porsche, because they are emphasizing a different aspect of the Taycan which they believe will give them an edge over the Tesla. Let's see what that is. Ask 10 of our engineers about it and get 10 different answers. But there's no debate about its existence. After just one day behind the wheel, it's the most valuable part of the car. The irreplaceable component. The thing you love more and more with every passing mile. The thing you instantly miss in any other car. The soul. I'm however not sure it is a soul, as it is hard to say that an electrical car has a soul. In my opinion, it is namely the similarity to a traditional car, and then especially the interior, where the Taycan excels. I think that the design itself and the quality of the interior will attract a different customer group than the early Tesla adopters. In the Taycan, customers will namely get a traditional Porsche setup, which is known to be state of the art. Look for example just to the difference in the steering wheel setup, then you see exactly what I mean. Besides that, Taycan customers can choose to spec their interior to a higher quality level and also the level of customization is way higher than it is for a Model S. You can for example choose to include real leather components in the interior, something which is not possible in the Tesla Model S besides the steering wheel. Now when it comes to the depreciation rate of the Porsche Taycan, we can of course only guess at the moment. A good estimation might however come from the depreciation curve of a Tesla Model S. And that is exactly what we are going to focus on now. The depreciation guide for the Tesla Model S which you are going to see is namely structured in the following way. In step number one, we will explore the market and have a look to the average price points. In step number two then, we will figure out what the depreciation curve is for the Model S and I will show you what the forecasted prices are. In step number three, we will figure out then what the depreciation per thousand miles driven is. And in step number four, I will show you what a fair purchasing price is for a Model S by using a state of the art machine learning algorithm. And for all of the numbers which I will show you in these steps, I will also provide a breakdown of the different versions of the Model S. Before we start however, please remember to smash that like button and support the channel by liking this video. It namely takes me a considerable amount of time and effort to put the analysis and the video together, so your support is highly appreciated. Let's start now with the first step, which is the market exploration, and that is shown in the two histograms over here. You can see that we have price on the horizontal axis and the number of cars available for that given price point on the vertical axis. The histogram at the top shows the price distribution and the histogram at the bottom shows the mileage distribution. If we start then with the price distribution, we can see first of all that there are 810 Model S's for sale. We can also see that prices start just under $30,000 but that they stretch up all the way to $120,000. You can also see the average price point which is indicated by the dashed line which is going to the graph. And this average price point is $55,140. Most of the cars are however priced below that average price point and the average price point is actually pushed up due to the cars which are priced over $80,000. If we move then to the mileage distribution, we can see that most of the cars have a mileage of between 0 and 40,000 miles. There are however some Model S's out there which have 120,000 miles on the clock. The average number of miles driven is of course a lot more reasonable and is 34,864 miles. Now if you are a little bit familiar with the Model S's model range, then you know that there's a lot more to the Model S than just these two histograms which we saw. And that is of course because there can be a huge difference in terms of speed and range for the different versions of the Model S. We are therefore going to have a look now again to the price distribution, but we are going to split this distribution between the different model types. But first, we'll figure out which model types are the most popular. That is shown in the graph over here, where we have the model types on the horizontal axis and the number of cars available for sale for that given model type on the vertical axis. Now if I put this graph on the big screen so you can see it a little bit better, you can see that the Model S all-wheel drive is offered for sale the most. 
You can see namely that out of the total market of 810 cars, more than 200 are of this model type. This is then followed by the standard Model S, the P85 and 85 Plus and the P90D. Now the video will become too long to cover all of these model types, but please feel free to pause the video and have a look to how many cars are available for each model type. We will now continue by having a look to the different price distributions for the different model types. That is namely shown in the graph over here, where we have price on the horizontal axis and the different model types on the vertical axis. That means that by having a look to the horizontal axis, you will get a sense of how the prices are distributed for each model type. And by having a look to the horizontal axis, you'll get a sense of how many cars are for sale for that given model type at that given price point. Now we're not going to go through all of the model types, so I will just point out a few interesting things from the graph. We can see now namely very clearly where the different model types overlap in prices and where they differentiate from each other. We can see for example that the majority of the model types is priced between 40 and 60 thousand dollars and that the Model S60 and the signature models are priced towards the lower end of the market. The higher price areas are covered by the P90D, the P100D and Performance and the 100D. Alright, we have now quite a good understanding of how the market looks like for the Model S. So that means that it's time to move on to the next step, which is the depreciation per year and the forecasted values. And that is exactly what is shown in the graph over here, where we have model year on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. Each of the blue bubbles which you see represents a Model S for sale in today's market, and the black axis which you see represent the average price point for that given model year. Then you also see that there's a blue solid line going through the graph, and this line is the depreciation curve for the Model S. If we have a look then to the depreciation per year, we can see that this is on average $6,473. Bear in mind that this is an average number. If we relate the depreciation rate then back to the newer price, we arrive at a relative depreciation of between 8 and 12%. And to me, that doesn't seem too bad at all. If we however have a look to the depreciation curve, we can see that this is a straight line. And this simply is a straight line because this was the best fit line through the points which you see on the graph. That also means that if we zoom in to the forecasted value range, there's no bottoming pattern in the market. In fact, if we investigate the forecasted value range more closely, we can see that we can say with a certainty of 95% that the forecasted value for a car of model year 2012 will be between 26.4 and 29.2 thousand dollars. So to put this a little bit more practical, this means that if you buy right now an average Model S from model year 2012 for an average price, that you can sell this car one year from now for a price somewhere between 26.2 and 29.4 thousand dollars. If we however take one step back from this graph, we can see that we need to interpret these numbers with a little bit of care. We can see namely that around $80,000 there's a clear demarcation point in the market. You can see namely over here that there are clearly two distinct price areas. And we of course already know why this is the case. We saw namely in an earlier graph where we had the price distribution split by model type that certain cars are priced way higher than other cars. Therefore, if we want to get more accurate depreciation numbers, we need to split this graph also by the different model types. And that is shown in the graph over here where we have model here on the horizontal axis and price still on the vertical axis. The bubbles are however now colored according to their model type. Now if I put this graph on the big screen, you can also see that it really becomes a big mess. So let's clean this graph a little bit. And to do this, we need to go back a few graphs to the graph which shows how many cars were offered for sale split by model type. I namely selected the top six cars offered for sale and only included those in the depreciation graph. And that resulted in the graph over here. You can see that we have the Model S, the Model S P85, P85 Plus, the Model S All Wheel Drive, the Model S P90D, the S90D and the S P100D slash performance. So what are the depreciation numbers for these model types and how do they differentiate from the average? Well, there are three model types which are depreciating less than the average and the rest is depreciating more than the average. Let's first have a look to the ones which are depreciating less. Those are the standard Model S, the S all wheel drive, and the P85 and the P85 Plus. The standard Model S is namely depreciating at $5,864 per year. The Model S all-wheel drive is depreciating at $3,724 per year. And the P85 slash P85 Plus is depreciating at $6,451 per year. If we have a look then to the cars which are depreciating more, then we can see that the P100D slash performance is depreciating on average $9,580 per year, the 90D at a rate of $9,894 per year, and that the P90D is depreciating the most at $11,527 per year. So it seems to be the case that in absolute terms, 
The cars which are priced over $80,000 are depreciating way more than the cars which are priced under $80,000. However, when you transfer these numbers back to relative numbers and compare them to the purchasing prices, then the differences are a lot smaller. So, we are now quite familiar with the depreciation per year and that means that it's time to move on to the next step, which is the depreciation per thousand miles driven. And that is shown in the graph over here, where we have now miles on the horizontal axis and price still on the vertical axis. And if you have a look to the depreciation rate for the depreciation per thousand miles driven, we can see that this is on average $302 per thousand miles. Now again, also here, bear in mind that this is an average number. Just as with the depreciation per year, you can also see here that there seems to be a clear difference for the cars priced under and above $80,000. Also, after 80,000 miles, you can see that the depreciation per thousand miles is clearly lower than the $302. You can namely see that if you would draw an imaginary line through the bubbles after 80,000 miles, you would get a slope which is less steep than the slope for the depreciation curve displayed in the graph. That means that if we want to get more accurate numbers, we also need to split this graph by the different model types. And that's exactly what I did and I used the same model types as I did in the depreciation per year graph. And the result of this is popping up now on your screen. And also here we can see that it are almost the same model types as in the depreciation per year graph which are depreciating less and more than the average. We can see namely that the standard model S is depreciating at $260 per thousand miles driven, the S all wheel drive at $295, the P85 slash P85 plus at $222 and the 90D at $302. So those are the cars which were depreciating less than the average depreciation per thousand miles driven. Looking then to the cars which are depreciating more than the average, we can see that the P90D at $697 and the P100D slash performance at $846 per thousand miles. So we've seen now all of these statistics. We know which model types are priced higher than the average price and which model types are priced lower than the average price. Also, we've seen which model types are depreciating more than the average and which are depreciating less than the average rate. But what would be then a good price point to buy at and what would be a fair purchasing price? That is exactly what we are going to figure out now. And to do that, we of course need to consider the price itself, the mileage, and the model year of the car. And all of those factors I inputted to a machine learning algorithm which outputted for me which cars have a fair purchasing price. And that means that if you buy one of those cars which have a fair purchasing price, you're not getting ripped off, but you're also not getting a good deal. Hence, the cars which I'm going to show you are following the normal market dynamics for a Tesla Model S. Now all three of the inputs to the machine learning model and the result are displayed in the 3D plot over here. You can see that we have model year, price and the mileage. The bubbles represent again the same Tesla Model S's which are for sale in today's market, but you can see that they are colored. And the darker the color, the more likely it is that that specific car is following the normal market dynamics for the Model S's market. You can see first of all that the cars which follow the normal market dynamics spawn across all of the model years. And if we rotate this graph a little bit, you can see that the fair purchasing price would be between forty dollars and $60,000. And if we rotate the graph again a little bit, you can see that those cars then would need to have a mileage of less than 50,000 miles. Now of course, the range which I just gave you, between forty dollars and $60,000 is a huge range. You can however see that if you only select a certain model year or a certain mileage range that the price range becomes smaller. And you can use this method to figure out for yourself what would be a fair purchasing price range for the specific car you're interested in. In general however you can see that the colors of the bubbles are becoming more lighter the lower the prices go. That means that you might be finding a better deal at the lower end of the fair purchasing price range, so around $40,000, but it also means that the chance that you get ripped off increases here. So overall, this is just a general guide and you of course need to do your own research very well. So that was the full depreciation analysis for the Model S, but let's take now one step back and reflect a little bit on all of the numbers which we've seen. In some ways, the Model S is namely depreciating like a normal car, but in other ways, there's also still quite a difference visible. First of all, we saw that the absolute depreciation number is significantly higher for the more expensive cars such as the P90D and the P100D than it is for the less expensive cars. And this is of course something which you can expect as this pattern can also be observed in the depreciation curves of the more traditional cars. And this effect goes both for the depreciation per year and the depreciation per thousand miles driven. I was however a little bit surprised to find that there was not yet a clear bottom visible in the market for the Model S. And this goes both for the cars at the higher end of the price spectrum and cars at the lower end of the price spectrum. We saw namely that the best fit depreciation line was still linear without any bottoming pattern in there. 
For the more traditional cars, however, I think it's fair to expect that after six years, some bottoming pattern is emerging. When we look, however, to the relative depreciation percentage, which was between 8 and 12% per year, we can see that this again is more in line with the traditional cars. It therefore seems to me that the total depreciation rate is more or less the same for a Model S as it is for a traditional car. However, when you look to the distribution of that depreciation, I think we can see a difference. The depreciation curves for a traditional car namely show a significant depreciation in the first two years and then usually start to bottom out. So the relative depreciation numbers would look something like minus 20%, minus 15%, minus 8, minus 8 percent. Now when it comes to the Model S, it seems to be the case that the depreciation is spread more evenly. So that means that for the Model S, the depreciation rate is less for the new cars, but a little bit more for the older cars. Overall, however, the depreciation is spread more evenly over the course of the six years which we analyzed. Now these are of course preliminary conclusions, but it might be something worthwhile to take into account when you're buying a Tesla Model S. To put this in some more practical terms, it means that you still need to consider this 8 to 12% depreciation per year when you buy a Tesla Model S in the fair purchasing price range. Now when it comes to the Porsche Taycan, the Porsche Taycan should be compared to the Model S P90D and the P100D, so the more expensive Tesla Model S's. And only time will tell us if the depreciation curve for a Porsche Taycan will look the same as for a Tesla Model S or that it will be more similar to a Porsche Panamera for example. Now overall, this analysis sparked my curiosity and I think it would be interesting to do a one-on-one -on -one comparison between cars like the BMW 5 Series, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class and the Audi A6 to the Tesla Model S. This would reveal exactly where the depreciation differs if it differs. Let me know in the comments down below if you would be interested to see such one-on-one -on -one comparison. And with that we arrived at the end of the video. Now if you enjoyed the analysis please support the channel by smashing that like button. Also make sure then to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified when the next analysis goes live. In the meantime if you're fed up with these electrical cars I can suggest that you check out the depreciation analysis for the Corvette C8 over here and for the C7 over here. As always, thank you for watching and see you next time.